This video is designed to help you start a rice retail business. At the end of the video, you'll find a valuable gift. It's a rice retail business plan that you can download and will lay down for you, step by step, everything you need to know to start a successful rice retail business of your own. If you are new to this channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button for more videos like this. With rice dealership business and with any kind of business for that matter, you need to apply for a business license. You need to look for a big storage room for the sacks of rice that will be delivered to you. You will also need to scout for a good location for your rice dealership business. You also have to implement FIFO, first in first out policy. You need to have several varieties of rice so that your customers will have several options. Get a comprehensive non-life insurance policy for your business. Make sure that you include the clause regarding acts of God in your insurance policy. Better be insured than be sorry. The guidelines regarding the rice dealership business may apply to the retail and wholesale business. You should ask for referrals from companies and friends. And be prepared to lose. If there is a peak season in any business of course there will also be the lean season. So you have to prepare yourself for this scenario. Make alternative plans prior to the lean season months. Offer discounts and other marketing strategies during this season. Some things to consider when starting a rice business, do you have enough capital, or when budget for your rice dealership business? Do you want to operate as a sole proprietorship or a corporation? Do you have a big and safe storage room for the sacks of rice that will be delivered to you? Do you have a good location for your rice dealership business? Research the area of your target market, the flow of traffic, and their buying habits. Do you have lists of rice suppliers in your area? Make sure you have a list of several suppliers and form good relationships with them. Do you have the necessary equipment like calibrated weighing scales, rice sacks etc., and service delivery, optional? What varieties of rice do you intend to sell? Make sure to have several varieties of rice, so that your customers will have several options. How will you market your business? This is also an important aspect, especially if you are new in this kind of business. Prepare a good marketing strategy, and make your business known to your customers. Make deals with restaurant owners, hotels, and resorts in your area to be their rice supplier. In order to start and run a smooth distributor business, you need to get the following things in place, a supplier. This should preferably be a rice farm because as the wholesale distributor, you need to buy from a source where you can get the rice in very large quantity, and at the cheapest possible rate, so that you can still make profits after spending on the logistics involved in getting the rice from the supplier to the retailers. Warehouse. Most times, you don't get to sell of the whole bulk of supply you get at once, to the retailers because there may be times when the market demand may be low, that is when you need a warehouse to store your rice, until you are ready to ship out to retailers. Capital. To become a wholesale distributor, you need to buy in very large quantities from rice farmers and sell in smaller bits to retailers, so starting a rice distribution business requires capital. The only exception is if you have a mutual understanding and agreement with the farmers, where they supply you the goods on a credit basis, you sell to the retailers and pay them off as soon as you are done with the sales. Transportation. As the distributor, you may have to be in charge of transporting the rice from the rice farm to your warehouse, or the delivery to customers when orders are placed. You may need to get several trucks to handle the distribution process, or you can strike an agreement with a logistic company to take care of the transportation process. With these four factors in place, you are now set to start your distribution business. Inasmuch as any rice business have an available market, you still need to conduct a feasibility study on the demand of rice in your location. You need to find out if there are retailers who are available to buy your rice, and how fast they sell out to consumers. This will help you get an idea about the market you have in your location, though you are not subjected to a particular location as a distributor, because you should be able to distribute fast and wide within and outside of your country, wherever there is demand for your product. License required. You may be required to get some sort of license in order to operate as a rice business in some states. Find out the license and other legal formalities applicable to your state and get them. The next part of the video is not specific to the rice retail business. Nevertheless, this knowledge is essential for success in the rice retail business, as well as in any other business. Ignore it at your own peril. Operating a successful rice retail business will depend on the following four conventions. 1. A practical plan, with a solid foundation. 2. Dedication, and willingness to sacrifice, to reach your goal. 3. Technical skills. 4. Basic knowledge of management, finance, record keeping and market analysis. As a new owner, you will need to master these skills, and techniques, if your business is to be successful.
Finding a niche. Small businesses range in size from a manufacturer, with many employees, and millions of dollars in equipment, to the lone window washer, with a bucket and a sponge. Obviously, the knowledge and skills, required for these two extremes, are far apart, but for success they have one thing in common. Each has found a business niche, and is filling it. The most critical problems you will face, in your early planning, will be to find your niche, and determine the feasibility of your idea. Get into the right business at the right time, is very good advice, but following that advice, may be difficult. Many entrepreneurs plunge into a business venture, so blinded by the dream, that they fail to thoroughly evaluate its potential. Is your business idea feasible? Before you invest time, effort, and money, the following exercise will help you separate sound ideas, from those bearing a high potential for failure. Identify and briefly describe, the business you plan to start. Identify the product or service, you plan to sell. Answering yes, to any of the following three questions, means you are on the right track. A negative answer, to all of them, means the road ahead could be rough. 1. Does your product or service, satisfy an unfilled need? 2. Will your product or service, serve an existing market, in which demand exceeds supply? 3. Will your product or service be competitive, based on its quality, selection, price, or location? Market Analysis for a small business to be successful, the owner must know the market. To learn the market, you must analyze it, a process that takes time and effort. You don't have to be a trained statistician, to analyze the marketplace, nor does the analysis have to be costly. Analyzing the market is a way to gather facts, about potential customers, and to determine the demand for your product or service. The more information you gather, the greater your chances of capturing a segment of the market. Know the market before investing your time and money in any business venture. The following questions, will help you collect the information necessary to analyze your market, and determine if your product or service will sell. This brief exercise will give you a good idea, of the kind of market planning you need to do. An answer of no, to any of the questions, indicates a weakness in your plan, so do your research, until you can answer each question with a yes. 1. Do you know who your customers will be? 2. Do you understand their needs and desires? Three. Do you know where they live? 4. Will you be offering the kind of products or services, that they will buy? 5. Will your prices be competitive, in quality and value? 6. Will your promotional program be effective? 7. Do you understand how your business compares with your competitors? 8. Will your business be conveniently located, for the people you plan to serve? 9. Will there be adequate parking facilities, for the people you plan to serve? Planning your startup. The following questions are grouped according to function. They are designed to help you prepare for opening day. Merchandise. Have you decided what items you will sell or produce, or what services you will provide? Have you made a merchandise plan, based upon estimated sales, to determine the amount of inventory you will need to control purchases? Have you found reliable suppliers, who will assist you in the startup? Have you compared the prices, quality, and credit terms, of suppliers? Business records. Are you prepared to maintain complete records, of sales, income and expenses, accounts payable, and receivables? Have you determined how to handle payroll records, tax reports, and payments? Do you know what financial reports, should be prepared, and how to prepare them? Finances. A large number of small businesses, fail each year. There are a number of reasons for these failures, but one of the main reasons is insufficient funds. Too many entrepreneurs try to start and operate a business, without sufficient capital, money. To avoid this dilemma, you can review your situation by analyzing the following three questions. 1. How much money do you have? 2. How much money will you need to start your business? 3. How much money will you need to stay in business? In order to answer the second question, how much money will you need to start your business? You need to prepare an estimate of all your startup costs. Here is a list of items, you may need to take into account. Note that this list is for a retail business. Items will vary for service, construction, manufacturing or online firms. Decorating and remodeling, fixtures and equipment, installing fixtures and equipment, services and supplies, beginning inventory cost, legal, professional fees, licenses and permits, telephone utility deposits, insurance, signs, advertising for opening, unanticipated expenses. Now, the answer to the third question. How much money will you need to stay in business? 
must be divided into two parts, immediate costs, and future costs. From the moment the door to your new business opens, a certain amount of income may come in. However, this income should not be projected in your operating expenses. You will need enough money available, to cover costs for at least the first three months of operation. The following list will help you project your operating expenses, on a monthly basis. Typical expenses for one month may include, your living costs, employee wages, rent, advertising, supplies, utilities, insurance, taxes, maintenance, delivery, transportation, miscellaneous. Now sum up the total estimated monthly expenses, and multiply it by 3, this is the amount of cash you will need, to cover operating expenses for 3 months. Deposit this amount in a savings account, before opening your business, use it only for those purposes listed in the above list, because this money will ensure that you will be able to continue in business during the crucial early stages. By adding the total startup costs, to the total expenses for 3 months, you can learn what the estimated costs will be to start and operate your business for 3 months. By subtracting the totals of the lists from the cash available, you can determine the amount of additional financing you may need, if any. Now you will need to estimate your operating expenses for the first year after startup. The first step in determining your annual expenses, is to estimate your sales volume, month by month. Next, determine the cost of sales. You may want to use a spreadsheet to do this. After startup, the primary source of revenue in your business, will be from sales, but your sales will vary from month to month, because of seasonal patterns, and other factors. It is important to determine if your monthly sales will produce enough income to pay each month's bills. An estimated cash flow projection, will show if the monthly cash balance, is going to be subject to such factors as the following, failure to recognize seasonal trends, excessive cash taken from the business, for living expenses, too rapid expansion, and slow collection of accounts, if credit is extended to customers. Conclusion If you have carefully answered all the questions in this video, you have seriously thought about your goal. However, there may be some things you may feel you need to know more about. Owning and running a rice retail business, is a continuous learning process. Research your idea, and do as much as you can, yourself. But don't hesitate to seek help from people who can tell you what you need to know. As we conclude this video, it's time you get your free rice retail business plan gift. Go to the description below this video, to get it now. It is completely free, no strings attached. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please, like, and hit the subscribe button, for more videos like this.